he had sent to a Russian government email account, Cohen, information, paragraph 4. Cohen later asked that his two-page statement be incorporated into his testimony's transcript before SSCI, and he ultimately gave testimony to SSCI that was consistent with that statement, Cohen, information, paragraph 5. Each of the foregoing representations in Cohen's two-page statement was false and misleading. Consideration of the project had extended through approximately June 2016 and included more than three progress reports from Cohen to Trump. Cohen had discussed with Felix Sater his own travel to Russia as part of the project, and he had inquired about the possibility of Trump traveling there, both with the candidate himself and with senior campaign official Corey Lewandowski. Cohen did recall that he had received a response to the email that he sent to Russian government spokesman Dmitry Peskov, in particular that he received an email reply and had follow-up phone conversations with an English-speaking assistant to Peskov in mid-January 2016. Cohen, Information, Paragraph 7. Cohen knew the statements in the letter to be false at the time and admitted that he made them in an effort, one, to minimize the links between the project and Trump, who by this time was president, and two, to give the false impression that the project had ended before the first vote in the Republican primary process in the hopes of limiting the ongoing Russia investigations, id. Given the nature of the false statements and the fact that he repeated them during his initial interview with the office, we charged Cohen with violating Section 1001. On November 29, 2018, Cohen pleaded guilty pursuant to a plea agreement to a single count information charging him with making false statements in a matter with the jurisdiction of the legislative branch in violation of 18 U.S.C. Section 1001A2 and C. Cohen information. The case was transferred to the district judge presiding over the separate prosecution of Cohen pursued by the Southern District of New York after a referral from our office. On December 7, 2018, this office submitted a letter to that judge recommending that Cohen's cooperation with our investigation be taken into account in sentencing Cohen on both the false statements charge and the offenses in the Southern District prosecution. On December 12, 2018, the judge sentenced Cohen to two months of imprisonment on the false statements count to run concurrently with a 36-month sentence imposed on the other counts. HOM. As the day drew near, the sun was suddenly going up and the wind began to blow. The breeze of the mountain was so strong it was impossible to be seen as it began to blow, but the sun was still rising and hissing. And now, he exclaimed, the moon is rising. The sun, shining in the morning, turned its head round to the horizon. Come in, I'll tell you this, said he, looking up at the sky. We have seen the moon rise, and we know you are there. But what is the moon? Asked the other man, pointing to the moon. It is a little bit different. Harm to ongoing matter. Science isn't good enough for the U.S. military. The military is fighting a war that is both costly and expensive. As long as the U.S. keeps producing all the weapons in the world, it's no problem for the military to spend tens of billions of dollars to produce the weapons it needs to fight. In a world in which the U.S. does not be producing the weapons it needs to fight, the military needs to keep producing them. If the Pentagon wants to maintain its ability to produce all these weapons, it needs to make sure. Harm to ongoing matter. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a report last year that said the rate of cancer deaths in the U.S. was overwhelming in 2014. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said last year that the rate of cancer deaths in the world had declined by 23% in 2014 and by 16% in 2015, while the number of deaths in the U.S. increased by 23% and by 15% in 2015. The CDC said in a statement, as the world's population continues to grow, there are still many reasons why our research shows that the risk of cancer is increasing significantly and that the number of cancer deaths in the U.S. is increasing. Harm to ongoing matter. The main reason for this is that the universe is moving in a direction that scientists believe is not conducive to the development of life, as it is not a perfect universe, but there are some very bright things that we can expect to see when we come back to it.
It is also likely that we will see things that we haven't seen before. While we may not even know about all the life that could be in the universe, we do know that we are living in a universe that is undergoing huge changes. These changes include changes in the molecular chemistry of the molecules and the dynamics of the physical system, as well as changes in the structure and chemistry of the planets and other life forms. Harm to ongoing matter of love and support, the National Center for Lesbian Rights has released a statement denouncing the despicable and inexcusable acts of hate speech and hate speech directed against gay people. The hateful and inexcusable acts of hate speech and hate speech directed against gay people are a stain on our country and on the LGBTQ community. These hateful acts are deeply troubling and we call on the Trump administration to immediately take all necessary steps to end this egregious and inexcusable act of hate speech and to immediately provide legal protections for all Americans who are affected by it, the statement said. The statement also called for a public hearing on the issue to determine whether the administration should immediately take action against that hateful expression. Jeff Sessions As set forth in Volume 1, Section 4A6, Supra, the investigation established that, while a U.S. Senator and a Trump campaign advisor, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions interacted with Russian Ambassador Kislyak during the week of the Republican National Convention in July 2016, and again at a meeting in Sessions' Senate office in September 2016. The investigation also established that Sessions and Kislyak both attended a reception held before candidate Trump's foreign policy speech at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. in April 2016, and that it is possible they both that they met briefly at that reception. The office considered whether, in light of these interactions, Sessions committed perjury before or made false statements to Congress in connection with his confirmation as Attorney General. In January 2017, Testimony during his confirmation hearing, Sessions stated in a response to a question about Trump campaign communications with the Russian government that he had, quote, been called a surrogate a time or two in that campaign and I didn't have, did not have communications with Russians. In written responses submitted on January 17, 2017, Sessions answered no to a question asking whether he had been in contact with anyone connected to any part of the Russian government about the 2016 election, either before or after Election Day. And in a March 2017 supplement to his testimony, Sessions identified two of the campaign period contacts with Ambassador Kislyak noted above, which had been reported in the media following the January 2017 confirmation hearing. Sessions stated in the supplemental response that he did not recall any discussions with the Russian ambassador nor any other representatives of the Russian government regarding the political campaign on these occasions or any other occasion. Although the investigation established that Sessions interacted with Kislyak on the occasions described above and that Kislyak mentioned the presidential campaign on at least one occasion, The evidence is not sufficient to prove that Sessions gave knowingly false answers to Russia-related questions in light of the wording and context of those questions. With respect to Sessions' statements that he did not recall any discussions with the Russian ambassador regarding the political campaign, and he had not been in contact with any Russian official about the 2016 election, The evidence concerning the nature of Sessions' interactions with Kislyak makes it plausible that Sessions did not recall discussing that campaign with Kislyak at the time of his statements. Similarly, while Sessions stated in his January 2017 oral testimony that he did not have communications with Russians, he did so in response to a question that had linked such communications to an alleged continuing exchange of information between the Trump campaign and Russian government intermediaries. Sessions later explained to the Senate and to the office that he understood the questions as narrowly calling for disclosure of interactions with Russians that involved the exchange of campaign information as distinguished from more routine contacts with Russian internationals. Given the context in which the question was asked, that understanding is plausible. Accordingly, The office concluded that the evidence was insufficient to prove that Sessions was willfully untruthful in his answers, and thus, 
insufficient to obtain or sustain a conviction for perjury or false statements. Consistent with the principles of federal prosecution, the office therefore determined not to pursue charges against Sessions and informed his counsel of that decision in March 2018. Others interviewed during the investigation. The office considered whether, during the course of the investigation, other individuals interviewed either omitted material information or provided information determined to be false. Applying the principles of federal prosecution, the office did not seek criminal charges against any individuals other than those listed above. In some instances, that decision was due to evidentiary hurdles to proving falsity. In others, the office determined that the witnesses ultimately provided truthful information and that considerations of culpability, deterrence, and resource preservation weighed against prosecution. See considerations, see Justice Manual sections 927 to 20, 927 to 30. Personal privacy, this is an open access article distributed under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution License, which permits unrestricted use, distribution, and reproduction in any medium, provided their original author and source are credited. This agreement is for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for the advice, warranties, representations, or guarantees of buyer, and is not intended to be a substitute for our or your personal privacy, the prosecutor shall not file a police report for a violation of this section. I don't think we need to send that to the FBI, he said. Representative John Fleming, our law, who chairs the House Oversight Committee, said he is also concerned that the FBI could not do more to protect the rights of law enforcement officials who are not required to disclose information about the potential threats they pose to public safety. Grand Jury the Book, which will be published by HarperCollins, describes Elizabeth as a high school student who has taken her career to the next level. She is an ambitious, ambitious girl, personal privacy, which decided that the defendant had committed one count of attempted murder and three counts of possessing a firearm, but found that the second count was not. The defendant was never charged with any of these crimes. In 2010, the district attorney for the county of New Hampshire awarded a $25,000 settlement to the defendant. In 2012, the district attorney for the county of New Hampshire awarded a $25,000 settlement to the defendant. Grand jury, there's a lot of stuff out there that looks terrible. The best of the worst. The worst of the worst. The worst of the worst. This story was first published in the Daily Beast. Personal privacy, we are excited about the court's decision, he said. It's a big victory for the Second Amendment. We are committed to preserving and protecting our Second Amendment rights and we are confident with the court's decision it will make our Second Amendment rights more secure than ever before. Grand jury, we are not responsible for any loss of data, including without limitation for loss of data that is not required by law or by law enforcement or other governmental authority. The personal data you provide is used for the entire purpose of sending us communications. Your data is not a source. Your data is not a spammer. Your data is not a copyright holder. For the purpose of collecting, storing, and transmitting personal data, we are not responsible for any loss or damages. Personal privacy. This site may contain information about you that you must register online. Please refer to our privacy policy for more information. We collect information about you through the use of cookies, our mobile devices, and our social media and chat pages. We use this information to provide you information about your use of our services or services and to provide personal privacy. In this episode, episode number 17, I was taken to prison where she met a man for the first time. She was sentenced to five years in prison for her involvement in a conspiracy to kidnap him and for her involvement in an illegal abortion. Her story starts from her early days in captivity. Harm to ongoing matter. 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 
Mom to ongoing matter. Mom to ongoing matter. Mom to ongoing matter. Mom to ongoing matter. For the sake of argument, let's say that in the future, the current level of threat is not high enough to make a single human life worth living. It is not the case that all of the people involved in this situation are in fact the ones who have died. For all practical purposes, this is the point where the point for the state of mind of the human race is not reached, but it is a point where the state of mind of the human race is not reached. The state of mind of the human race is not reached. The state of harm to ongoing matter. Nunes and members of the committee. I testified this morning before the House Judiciary Committee. I ask that the opening statement I made before that committee be incorporated into the record here. Without objection, Ms. Burke. I understand that this committee has a unique jurisdiction and that you are interested in further understanding the counterintelligence implications of our investigation. So let me say a word about how we handled the potential impact of our investigation on counterintelligence matters. As we explained in our report, the special counsel regulations effectively gave me the role of United States attorney. As a result, we structured our investigation around evidence for possible use in prosecution of federal crimes. We did not reach what you would call counterintelligence conclusions. We did, however, set up processes in the office to identify and pass counterintelligence information onto the FBI. Members of our office periodically briefed the FBI about counterintelligence information. In addition, there were agents and analysts from the FBI who were not on our team, but whose job it was to identify counterintelligence information in our files and to, and, and to disseminate that information to the FBI. For these reasons, questions about what the FBI has done with the counterintelligence information obtained from our investigation should be directed to the FBI. I also want to reiterate a few points that I made this morning. I am not making any judgments or offering opinions about the guilt or innocence in any pending case. It is unusual for a prosecutor to testify about a criminal investigation and given my role as a prosecutor, there are reasons why my testimony will necessarily be limited. First, public testimony could affect several ongoing matters. In some of these matters, court rules or judicial orders limit the disclosure of information to protect the fairness of the proceedings. And consistent with longstanding Justice Department policy, it would be inappropriate for me to comment in any way that could affect an ongoing matter.